I am so honored this morning to present to you Reverend Sarah. Uh, Reverend Sarah is the staff minister here. We're so glad to have her back after she had a congregation of her own, but we're blessed to have her back. Please welcome Reverend Sarah. Thank you, Reverend Rick. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, band. Oh my God. My brother-in-law uh, sent me a poem he wrote this morning about some, from the perspective of a bat. And the bat said, we sing to locate ourselves. Yes. Right? right? Oh, man, that's why I'm in the choir, to locate myself. That's why I'm doing anything. <laughs> and and I'm, made, I'm right here, right? Wow. How to know what you know. My sweet Lord, I really want to know you, but it takes so long. But actually, the wait is over because the Spirit is right here in and as me. And when I know myself, I know the Lord. And when I know the Spirit's infinite wisdom in, as, and through me. I didn't want to know any of that when I walked into this into Center for Spiritual Awareness 20 years ago over on Capitol Avenue in a little bit smaller room. I didn't want to know any of that. I was just in pain. I was in pain. I had a family member who had been ill for several years, the closest possible family member, and I couldn't make them well. And I couldn't deal with the feelings that it brought up in me to not be able to make this family member well. I just couldn't deal with it. And so I was doing all the things. Oh, that's that. <laughs> Justin said my necklace might knock this off. I thought it did that. I was doing all the things I knew how to do to cope with feeling that way. I was uh, eating a lot. I was shopping a lot. I was in constant motion. And most of all, is trying to control everything, control all of y'all, <laughs> everyone in my family, everything there was in order to feel, in order to not feel, in order to cope. And I had been looking for a spiritual home. We had moved to Sacramento five years before I walked into Center for Spiritual Awareness. And I was looking for a spiritual home I, I had been in an Episcopal church in Washington, D.C. In fact, I'd come this close to enrolling in Episcopal seminary. But there was always this sense of translation that I had to do of everything that I was listening. I had to translate it from something else. So they would talk about Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and I would be translating it into mind, body, and spirit. And then I walked in here, and I didn't have to translate anymore. Right? I didn't have to translate anymore, and you told me what I suspected might be true, but actually didn't feel true, which was that I was whole, perfect, and complete, exactly as I am right now. And so are all of you. And you also taught me that I was connected to all things, that we all are, and that spirit is not just a man in the sky with a beard controlling events, but it's everything. It's everything. It's everything that is known and everything that is not known, everything that has been created and is visible to us and everything that we haven't yet brought in. All of that is spirit. And you taught me how to affirm, <laughs> affirm what I want. And you taught me how to work reliably, with, scientifically, with spiritual principle. Meaning that when I do it, I know that if I do this, this will happen. Right? Some of us have had it explained to us like, it's, we don't always understand why it works, but we know that it works. Right? Red and blue together make purple. You can't explain why that is. It's just a fact. And it will happen. And it's the same way working with spiritual principle. And you taught me I was always at choice. I always had a choice in every single thing in my life, right? But if you taught me how to choose, I wasn't listening. 
I, I miss that day of class. I, I have, I, you, I don't remember ever learning how to know what to choose. And so it was hard for me sometimes to affirm and do all the things because I was doing it from a place of not knowing my truth. Well, what, why would we want to know? What, what do we want to know about? What would I want to know about? Well, lots of things, right? We, we want to know about relationships, whether to get in one, <laughs> whether to end one, whether to take it to the next level. We want to know about career, whether it's time to retire, whether it's time to go back to work, whether it's time to, get a, to go to grad school, change jobs altogether, quit and move to a shack in the woods. <laughs> Financial stuff, you know, we all, we, we come in and a lot of people say, well, we want more money, but do we really know what we want to do with it? Have we made those choices? Do we know what's really ours exactly to do? You know, buy, rent, get an EV, when is that going to be? How do I do the charging thing? All that. <laughs> And then there's health. It was something I've thought about a real lot because I had a career in health policy and I had a sick kid for 10 years. And while my kid was not healing, I was healing. I was healing myself, learning he the things that from lots of different providers, from every kind of blankologist you can think of to shaman and everything in between. You know, we, we may, you know, do, doctors and providers are part of God. They're not separate from God, but they don't always know everything. And so there's stuff that I can know and learn to know about what's, uh, what's the right treatment for me? What's really going on here that they haven't asked me about yet, right? What's food as medicine for me, right? Everybody, everybody wants to tell you what food as medicine is for them. Am I right? Oh yeah, can I tell you exactly what I eat and you have to eat that and if you don't eat that, you're gonna die. <laughs> but, but what's food as medicine for me? What's food as medicine for me? Yeah, it's not all the same. And how have we been choosing? Google, <laughs> right? Go down the Google rabbit hole for hours, stay up to 3 a.m. trying to figure it out. But you know, Google doesn't, I mean, the AI may do this soon, but uh, it doesn't so far really make decisions for us or know what is mine to know. It might just give me a lot more choices and a lot more information. Ever have that feeling like, or maybe I'll just impulsively like spend a lot of money on something in order to kind of say I've made that decision, right? Family and friends who have so much wisdom. <laughs> uh, no, they do, right? But man, do they, are they really able, even the most incredible of them, are they really able to be there and be completely in what is right for me and not maybe right for them in my decision, right? Definitely. It can be hard. I literally think it was in this room and from Reverend Georgia that I heard her say, that I heard it first said that we can love every one of our family and friends, but we do not have to seat them all on the front row of our lives. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, trusted advisors. The best trusted advisors, the best family and friends are probably going to lead us back to ourselves. What's right for you? I cannot tell you how many times I have advised someone or someone has come to me for advice and I've brought them back to themselves and they've gone, I don't know how to know. I don't know how to know what's right for me. How do I do that? Well, that's what I like to think about. That's what I'm writing a whole book about. That's what I'm doing a workshop on today, and that's what I'm teaching a class on. Is how do you know what you know? How do I figure, what are some of the things I've learned about how to do that? And to practice those things. And to guide us back to self, back to spirit. 
Because since we are all connected, right, and since we are human spir spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in a human body on a human plane, the only way that I can really know spirit is through me. And the only way that I can really know me is by connecting to the infinite part of myself rather than all the other stuff, all the things my family taught me, all the collective consciousness swimming out there, all the things society should do, et cetera, et cetera. I recommend preparation, and I teach preparation for knowing what I know, then learning ways to know what I know, and then practicing knowing what I know. Um, preparation, there's lots of ways. Uh, I was lucky enough and am lucky enough to uh, have multiple addictions. And so I, I, have, I have been able to use a wonderful and free practice called the 12 steps to pull the weeds of my consciousness, to pull the part of our teaching symbol where we, we take the seed and we plant it in the soil. The soil of consciousness can be choked with weeds from fear, doubt, worry, shoulda, woulda, coulda, what my mom thinks, what everybody thinks, right, is in there. So how do we pull those weeds? I bet a lot of you have good ways to pull the weeds, but do you practice them on a regular basis, right? Or you just go, oh, there's a weed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and then when I can really get in, when I've pulled the weeds, then I can know what I know. And then that's going to, to really lay the groundwork for what I can affirm. Because uh, once I know that this is my truth, this is how I want my life to be, this is what my choices are, whether they're mundane or whether they're profound, that's really where, where the prayer request and the affirmation comes from. One of the, one of the things I like for preparing is questions. And I like questions generally. I've learned, I learn them mostly from this set of tools called access consciousness, but then I just use them all the time and weave them in with the way we pray and the way we do. One of my favorite is what else is possible? A lot of you who know me know that I say that all the time. I did not invent it, but I do love it because it is, it's more of a way of tilling the soil than pulling the weeds. It, it, it stirs it up. And it gets me out of old thoughts. We say we're a new thought church, but sometimes we don't really get into the specifics of how do we actually attract new thoughts? How do we not be in what we were thinking yesterday, what we were choosing yesterday? What else is possible is that? And it's not an assignment. I'm like, a, I, I was, you know, a student, right? So I was like, oh, is that my assignment? What else is possible? I'm going to find that out, and I'm going to get to the answer. No, that's not what else is possible. <laughs> what else is possible, what else is possible is a question for the universe to, to, to give me. And my only assignment is to be curious. Yes. Yeah. Start, woo, it's so high vibration, that question. That's what I love about it. And you just start being curious, and you just feel like people start coming to you and you start seeing ads that you never saw before, books you never saw before, or somebody says something that they've said 50 times but you didn't hear it for the first 49 times, right? That kind of thing starts occurring to answer the question, what else is possible? Hmm. My daughter, I'm very blessed to have a daughter who loves me and asks for my advice. She's very agnostic about the spiritual aspect of it, but she likes to call me. And I secretly cry every time she calls me <laughs> but, oh, because I couldn't ask my mom for advice. Well, like, because it, it was horrible, whatever was going to come out of her mouth. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I could ask her, but at my peril. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if any of you can relate, but the. Uh, <laughs> Well, my daughter once called me from an airport in Europe where her flight had just been, she, her next connecting flight had been canceled and she was told it was going to be like uh, all overnight and more that she was going to have to wait in the airport for the next thing. And she was in tears. She was about 22. She's trying, like, 
what do I do? I don't know what to do. And I said, say aloud, what else is possible? And she said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in an airport, and that's just stupid. And I said, well, you call me, <laughs> you know. And she goes, great, that's all you have. All right, bye, Mom. Thanks for nothing. So she hangs up. And then about 15 minutes later, she calls me back. She goes, you're never going to believe what happened. I said, mm, try me. And she said, I went up to the desk to an actual human that I had already talked to three times. And I said, I'm just wondering what else is possible. <laughs> See, she's not going to say it to spirit, but she'll say it to a human and, and, and think that spirit's not involved. And uh, Whatever, you know, whatever. And so, and, so, and so the person goes, well, you know, as you know, we, oh, hmm, that's weird. There's a new flight going to your city, and it's leaving in 10 minutes from that gate. Do you want to be on it, you know? And she was calling me from the gate, on the plane. She's on the plane already. I mean, that is how fast spirit can work when we get into it. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, so one of my, one of my, one of my, I might get around to it. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite tools that I will obsessively talk about to you if you come to the workshop. By the way, today in the workshop, any of you thinking of coming? By the way, it helps me figure out which room we're going to be in. You don't have to commit, but yeah. Okay, good. Good to know. Um, and it's a love offering, uh, how much it costs. Um, but give a lot. Because <laughs> it'll help you. Not for me. It's going to the center. All, all goes to the center. But the, um, what, what I love a lot is what is light for me means yes. Light means yes and heavy means no. Light is yes, and heavy is no. So if you picture right now something you're, you've been trying to decide, if you can dial it down to two choices, and if you don't have anything, just go option A, option B, just to play. Option A, how does it feel in your chest, in your field? Does it feel light, like spacious, and almost like nothingness? and just expansion? Or does it feel heavy or somewhere in between? And then go to option B, and does it feel light and expansive, or does it feel heavy or somewhere in between? A lot of times it's somewhere in between, but I had the hardest time with this tool that is now one of my favorite tools because I was just this good little girl who was trying to save my family and trying to save the world. And so I thought what is, what is yes, I thought my yes was always should, what I should do. And it turns out shoulds are very heavy, right? So, you know, um, I was that girl that every mom wanted to know, is Sarah going in high school? Is she driving? Okay, my kid can go. Because they knew I would be, instead of having a good time, I would hyper-responsibly, I wasn't that kind of addict, I was the kind of addict who was hyper-responsibly keeping everyone safe, being the mom, and going around from car to car, getting kids out of the cars and back into my car, and, you know, and and having them say, thank God I had a leotard on, I'm still a virgin. And then, I don't know why, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> no, 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 Sarah. That's not this talk. But the, um, so it was really hard for me to get the idea of light being yes. That expansion, that nothingness, felt like it must be a no. And that Arr! must be a yes. Does anybody relate to that? Anybody relate to that? Yeah. Well, it turns out, as I mentioned before, and you may have heard before, we are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in a human body on a human plane. And spirit is light. 
Spirit is expansive. Spirit is all possibility. And spirit came to here to experience more of itself as us. It, it broke itself into all these pieces in order to experience life as us. Yes. Right? Yes. And it wants to do yes. different, what it wants to do through me. And so it has its yes for me. It so does. Has anybody ever known full well what spirit was saying and then done something else altogether? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. thought, well, I mean, I didn't think any of you would, but I just thought I'd ask. And so that is like, right, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We're here to have the experiences. And the only way to break out of that that I know is to actually really dial into what is that real yes, that lightness of being. And it has answers in all areas of our lives. I will also teach, and I teach you how to practice, how to practice all this. I mean, there's so many other tools I use. Visioning, you may have heard of that. These questions, two-way writing, uh, wisdom of the body, chakras, candle flame, picturing a candle flame, tracking coincidence, muscle testing, creativity, dropping into the sacred heart. A lot of these are what I use and will teach in the class. Um, and you'll get to practice, if you come to the workshop today, you'll get to work on some stuff that you're doing right now. I, I, if you've ever taken a class from me, we just get into it. We just get right into it. We don't, I don't be like, I'm going to teach this today. It's like, what's in the room? Who, what is in you? That, what decision do you have right now that you want to work on, that you want to find your yes on? And we can do that. And practicing, I like to practice with um, games uh, like Sudoku, where there's, a, where there's a right and wrong answer where it's either two or three, you know, it's either a two and that's right or any other number is wrong. True, true or false. Anything true or false is a great way to practice because it's very low stakes. So you can go, you can use any of the tools and you can go, is that a yes? No, <laughs> evidently not. And I, I win at Sudoku all the time on levels that I have no like mathematical ability to get to and I'm not psychic except in the way that we all are, in the sense that we are connected to all things, and we can find our yes. Now, if you don't like Sudoku, maybe you don't have a yes for it, <laughs> and you don't, you don't want to do it. And the other thing is to practice, just in, your daily, in my daily life, just practice choosing food on a menu. What's, is this, is this my food, or is this my food? Like sometimes we might have turkey burger and quinoa kale bowl, and we might assume that the that the body yes is the quinoa kale bowl, but maybe it's not. Maybe the body yes is turkey burger and fries that day. I don't know. You know, I can't tell you, only you can tell you. I can tell you that a lot of people in this room will probably try to tell you, but. <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and I, I, I know because I've been that people. <laughs> that's, that's how I know. All right, let's take this message into prayer. I know, as I have said, dear spirit, that each person in here is a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human body on a human plane. And that they are here to be more of spirit in this life, to experience more than they have even up to this point to be a leader of a totally different reality, to bring and usher in a world that works for everyone, a body that works for them, an experience of life that is tingling at a high, high vibration, and that is filled always with compassion and love for whatever is and whatever shows up. And so I speak my word for that truth, for this congregation, for everyone within the sound of my voice, 
for everyone who wants the helping of this, this is your life. You know, we know what we know today. We know it without even taking a class or a workshop if possible. What else is possible? How does it get even better than this? We allow the unfolding of our lives to come through us at a level that has never, ever happened before and destroy and, and uncreate all the thoughts, beliefs, opinions, conclusions, swearings, bindings, bondings that we have had in this lifetime or in any lifetime that have kept us from that. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you for the fact that my word spoken with passion and authority never comes back to me void, that as it is done in the mind, it is done in capital R and small r reality. I let go and I let that part of spirit that we call the law operate upon it perfectly and I know that it is so and so it is. And so it is.